Welcome back to Corbin AI. I hope everyone's having a great weekend. I am here to show you how to start leveraging artificial intelligence in your personal and your business life. Now, this specific video, we're gonna be focusing on a specific tool that Zappy provides called Storage. And what we're gonna learn and have the ability to do after this video is the ability to pass data between different Zapier flows. Now, more specifically, what I mean by that is let's say we have a Zapier flow that we're gonna call it A, that creates the first half of a book. We're gonna be able to pass the relevant context and data from Zapier A to the second Zapier flow, which is gonna be Zapier B, in order to continue said book because of the fact of the limitations of Zapier, but also because of the fact that sometimes it is more effective to you know, ensure that you have tasks done for automations at a smaller scale. So you might be asking yourself, okay, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by smaller scale? So essentially, if I had the choice between building out a Zapier flow that does 80 different steps or breaking up that Zapier flow into, you know, Zapier A that does 40 of the steps and then passing the relevant data to Zapier B, which does the other 40 of the steps, this is gonna be a more effective thought process and automation process when it comes to scale due to the fact that if you go to the original automation that's occurring for 80 different steps, there is a higher probability of failure to incur because you're essentially betting that all 80 steps are going to work, right? Which most cases will, but if we split it up into different flows, we're going to give ourselves more insurance. But beyond all that, in today's example, I'm going to show you how to leverage this Zapier toolkit, which is called storage in the context of the earlier video I did this week, where essentially I showed you how to create a book automation that essentially creates a book from start to finish automatically. We're going to use that specific Zapier automation we created here. And we're going to go ahead and show you how to take the relevant context within that and pass it over to another Zapier flow. You can go ahead and extrapolate the value you get from this to any other business context. You want to do it. But let's go ahead and learn how to essentially pass data between Zapier automations. All right. So coming over to our flow that we created earlier this week, this essentially was a flow where we had a Google form we provided input responses for the type of book we wanted and based off our limited amount of data that we provided here and I believe I can pull it up here. There we go. Based off this limited amount of data here, we were going to be able to generate an entire book. But let's take this one step further here as the purpose of this video is not to show you how to finish this book, but in the sense of let's say we want to make a complex flow and pass data between that is found in this automation to another automation. So the way we do that is actually really simple. And it simply is going to be the process of creating storage blocks for whatever relevant data that you deem as valuable. So let me just give you a real quick example. So let's go ahead and do a storage block for the book title because this may be relevant for us in future, in future flows that we have that is not in this specific automation. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag this down here and we're gonna do an event of set value. So essentially the way this works is when I set a value here, we're gonna go ahead and the data, we're going to go ahead and associate data with a specific uh, quote unquote key. Um, if you're familiar with code, this is like setting up a variable, like a const. Um, but from here, we're going to go ahead and just say uh, title book. And essentially, we set up our value variable here. And we're going to put in the value of what is title book. And for us, it's going to be the title of the book. And essentially, what this allows us to do is now we've associated this variable or key in this context to title book and what this means and i can just show you real quick in this flow is we can go ahead and call upon it later but more importantly we can call upon it in other zapier flow so let me just show you what it looks like when we call upon it we're gonna say get value here we're gonna continue continue i'm gonna put title book i'm gonna hit continue here and then i'm gonna test this step and then that title should show up here and there we go so the wheels might be turning in your head right now Let's go ahead and you know really flesh this out and show you the value that you can get here. So right off the bat here, let's go ahead in case we got the title of the book. We can go ahead and rename this. Let me zoom in here. We can go ahead and rename this to title book stored. And then let's go ahead and that's gonna be relevant for us because of a couple of things. One, just because we can reference that as right now our Google Doc, the way it's saved is going to be the title of the book. So we're gonna use that later in the other Zapier flow as you'll see here. So I'm going to show you some valuable insight here. So there is one thing you can do here where essentially, you know, the limit of the amount of data that is associated with the storage block is pretty big here. So let me just give you an example of this. Let's say we wanted to store the first chapter that's output or the first half of the chapter. So we're going to go ahead and say uh, set value here. We're going to continue, continue, and then we're going to put in the key uh, first chap. And then we'll go ahead and put the value here. We'll give the output here, right? So this is a pretty big chunk of data here. And as you'll see, this all this data 
can be associated with first chat. And we're going to be able to call upon this data in a later flow. So this can handle big amounts of data, which is nice to know as it isn't just limited to like 32 characters, 64 characters and stuff of this nature. All right. So now that we know it can handle big pieces of data, and we also know it can handle fundamental pieces of data that are formatted. Let's go ahead and learn a little trick here that may be important for whatever your business context is. It's not necessarily important for this one because we may need a lot of the, the chapter in order to continue the chapter. But let me show you a little trick here. So let's say we're dealing with data and essentially there is certain parts of that data that we care about and there's certain parts that we don't care about. So we want to store only certain parts or let's just say we want to compress the data because it's not all the data that is presented is not relevant. So let me go ahead and give a chat GT block here. And what you're going to want to do here is you're going to want to use a uh, conversation and you're going to want to use the model of GBT 3.5 and turbo and 16 K if uh, it require if it's a lot of data you're trying to compress. So let's just say in this context, since it's not that much, we're going to compress chapter, the first half of the chapter one, we're going to say base off this chapter. We're going to give chapter here because we've identified chapter as a variable there. We do parentheses and we're going to go ahead and input the reply here. There we go. We're going to say generates a, you know, let's just say one sentence summary. Obviously, we can add more proctoring, more structuring, but for now, it should be good. Random 32 characters ensures consistent outputs. So I'm going to test action here. And based off this entire block of text, we're going to get one sentence summary here. Okay, perfect. What we can do here is we can go ahead and add our storage block here and storage by Zapier. And now based off that, you know, big amount of data, we can go ahead and set the value here to, you know, some chat and essentially provide the reply here. So in this specific context, it may not be relevant or pertinent. But there is going to be context here where essentially maybe it's a lead email, maybe it's something that's incurring within your back end of your system, where essentially there is going to be a certain point of data that is found within an automation in your business that is relevant that you could use in other parts of automations, but you can't necessarily grab that piece of data for maybe a multitude of reasons. One reason might be the initial trigger, or the, the underlying way to access that piece of data is limited. So, you know, you can't really trigger, you know, new file, on Google drive, you can't really trigger it to access it. Another reason might be the fact that that specific piece of data would be in theory accessible. But the problem is, is that it's not natively integrated into Zapier. So you would have to do a custom API work in order to access that uh, piece of data. But for now, as you see here, you can go ahead and grab that piece of data, put it as a storage block and use it later. So now that we understand the fundamentals of a storage block, let's go ahead and jump over to build out a new Zapier flow and call upon these pieces of data. Now, before I do that, one thing I want to remind you all is remember the name of the document that we're naming here for this specific context of creating this book is going to, you know, it's the output of name here that we saved here. So let's go ahead and create that new Zap. We're going to go ahead and come over to the book generator here, say create new Zap here. So in this specific context, let's act like we're building out a super complex flow to essentially um, write this book. At the end of that flow, essentially what we did was with the relevant information that we got in that flow, we created a new document with all that, you know, outputs and we put it into our Google drive folder. So what we can do here is actually one thing I need to do before I even do that is actually I need to give myself some sample data here. So let me go ahead and jump back over to that book generator here. I'm going to test this action just so you can kind of see it live. So we go ahead and let me see edit draft here and we'll come down here. And essentially, this is just if you're interested in this whole mock up, you can check out the video here. It's just called uh, Automate Book Creation. And essentially, we're putting this in the folder called YouTube Zaps here. I'm going to retest this uh, step here. And as you see, if I come over here, it should pop up right here. There we go. And this is the relevant, you know, showing you the creation process. But this is the file we're dealing with here. So let's go ahead and come back over to that zap I was just creating there. We're we'll going to create a new one because we might as well. We didn't really do any much work on it yet. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new zap here. And essentially, in this specific context, uh, what we care about is a Google Drive, a new Google Doc being created, right? So I don't know what your context may be for why you would want to call upon your storage values again. But for this one, it's going to be new documented folder. We're going to continue here. We're going to choose our account. For us, we are playing around with our courses account here. We're going to continue. And then the specific folder that we care about is going to be the YouTube Zaps because that's where we designated the drop place. I'm going to hit test trigger here. And based off that test trigger here, if I hit title, uh, title, you will see that we got our title here. So in order to ensure this works perfectly, we're going to add a filter block here. 
And then before the filter block, we're going to add a storage block. So we're going to add a storage block here. And with the storage block, we're going to get that value that we set for the title of the book. And if I remember correctly, I believe it was just title book. And continue here, test this step. And then we should get, there we go. And then from here, we're only going to continue if the title of the book matches the document that was just added here. So we're going to say exactly matches. And then we're going to come over here and we're going to go to title. There we go. So this ensures that this flow does not incur any weight any further unless we are specifically dealing with the specific uh, first half of the book we created in the you know Zapier A. Now we're in Zapier B. So what incurs in Zapier B? What incurs in Zapier B is now, in theory, if I would have stored the table of contents, I could call it into here. So let's just call some values just to, to kind of see what I mean by this. So let's go storage here. And we're going to say uh, get value. I'm going to go ahead and open the other automation real quick. So coming over to the other automation here, just going to grab the values. Uh, you know, remember we did the one value set where essentially we just summarized the first half of the chapter. Coming over here, I can say get value, continue, continue, hit some chap. And then essentially test step, we're going to get the summary of the chapter here in a whole new Zapier flow. There we go. And then it, the last one that we went ahead, not that. The last one we went ahead and did was grab the entire underlying chapter here. So we're going to say first chap, and we can go ahead and just duplicate this. Or not duplicate it. doesn't want me to duplicate it. It's fine. And it's storage here. And we're just going to go ahead and get this value again and continue, continue. And we're going to put the first chap here, test, test step, and then we should get the entire data that we associated and put in there. So perfect. We got all the data associated there, and obviously... You know, you build out your entire flow here. Now it's like it can kick it off once it's done with the first half of the book. It'll kick it off to this one because a new doc will be created. It will make sure that doc is the one we're associating with everything that we care about. And then we'll kind of proceed from here. Now your next question might be, okay, what if the the underlying value changes? Don't worry. So what I mean by that essentially is that when you recreate that book or whatever your process is, when, if there's a new variable here, like uh, let's just put, you know, bananas. And I hit continue here and I retest this step the value that this is going to call upon here is going to be bananas because we essentially reset the key. We reset the associated data to that key. So that concludes this video in the context of understanding how to pass Zapier data between A and B. This is valuable in a lot of different contexts. This is especially valuable when you're dealing with very long flows or in the sense that you want to call upon data that is relevant to you that maybe is hard to access. Now, just to give you some more context of what's occurring here, if uh, essentially Office Zapier gives us a nice little drag and drop UI, what's actually occurring in the back end here is essentially you're creating a, a variable, a const variable in your quote unquote file. And a const variable is going to be, you're essentially putting in live data into that variable, right? So what does apples mean? Apples means, you know, this chat DBT output. And when you go from Zapier A to Zapier B, in the context of code, you're essentially importing the value you created in this file to this file. I just want to give that brief, like, I feel like I should start giving a little bit more like legit, like not, uh, how do I say this? Real practical uh, information when it comes to like what's happening in the back end when it comes to the code and how it communicates, because knowing that intuitively is going to help you build out better flows. And essentially now that you know, that's kind of how it's communicating in that context. But without further ado, if you felt value in today's video, make sure to like the video. It's completely free. I'm going to leave a playlist here at the end where essentially we're jumping into all 5,000 apps on Zapier. And I'm showing you how to leverage every single one when it comes to artificial intelligence. I encourage you to check it out. It saves you time. It saves you money. But without further ado, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for tuning in. And yes, surprise. I'm an AI avatar. Make sure to explore more here at Corbin AI where we demystify AI for your personal and business life. Until next time.